Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad to welcome you back to our program again this week. We're glad for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in the cities in CCX's viewing area. Because it is important for good government to know what's going on and when it's an issue that's important to you that you keep in contact with your mayors and city council people. If you haven't watched our show before, each week we'll have someone on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to bring us up to date on what's been happening and what's up and coming in that city so that you can be more tuned in to what's happening and we hope when you have the time volunteer to help out in your city because that's important too. And we're very happy tonight to welcome Mayor Mark Stephenson from Maple Grove. We're happy to have you with us again. Thank you. We've had you on many, many times. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here again. Right. And I'm going to let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience. Okay. So I am Mark Stephenson. I've been on the city council since 1997. I was a city council member for about five years before I came, became the mayor in 2001. Was recently reelected here in the fall, so I got another four-year term ahead of me. Um, so I've been on the city council for 21 years and have seen a lot of changes in Maple Whoa, Grove. Yes. And and my family is, I grew up in the northwest suburbs, uh -huh. went to Robbinsdale High School, and my wife went to Park Center. So uh -huh. we've lived here all our lives and have seen a lot of changes in the community and you know, there's a lot more changes coming. Well, I'm sure that helps as you're looking towards the future because you've got all that knowledge from what's happened before. Well, I, I think it does. I mean, you remember sort of the changes. I remember mm -hmm. when, you know, County Road 18 opened right, up, right. which is now 169, but right. that was a big deal back then. Oh, yes. But. Now, city boards and commissions are at the point where you're going to make some um, we make changes the, yes. in who's on there. And I thought we should talk a little bit about, for people out there that maybe aren't even familiar, they might know you have something, but they don't know I, what it is or how to get on it or that type of thing. And I've got a listing of different com commissions. Maybe I'll ask you to explain each one as we go along. Okay? Sure. Uh, you have an Arbor Committee? Right. So that is a committee that deals with a series of issues that deal mainly with arbor issues or plants okay. or trees. Okay. So they review all of our plans to make sure that they're complying okay. with our requirements for buildings, especially commercial buildings. Uh -huh. um, you know, they give direct input as to the types of trees, shrubs, various things that we should be using. Uh, you know, a good example is ash trees. Okay. We stopped maybe 10, 15 uh -huh. years ago planting ash trees uh -huh. in the city because we knew that the ash borer was coming. Right. And so it didn't make a lot of sense for the city to be planting oh, right. boulevard right. ash trees that in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, mm -hmm. we'd simply have to take down. Right. So, um, you know, and so that's part of their input and part of their input is to review the development's plans to make sure that they're complying with the environmental rules oh, sure. as well. And then even the commercial buildings coming in do uh, They do planning with landscaping the, plans landscaping, that have to get right. approved by them as well. Okay, you have a Citizens Advisory Committee? Yes. So that's a rather larger committee that we have that really sort of looks at periodic issues that we oftentimes as a city council would like them to analyze or look at. Oh, sure. <coughs> and so we say, you know, could you look at this concept or this idea or how we'd like to approach these issues or what what the committee sees happening here and they provide a lot of input oh, right. um, on different concepts over the years. You know. And then they do a lot, a lot of work that they bring to the council. So you don't have to do all that gathering, they can bring it to you. Right, and they, we've really used them as sort of, you know, a research tool uh -huh. and sort of our long-range planning tool. What would you like to see coming here? Right. What, you know, if we brought this into town, what would be the concerns uh -huh. or issues? Uh, you know, I, I know one of the things they've been working on for a period of time is sort of an art center, a community uh -huh. art center. How would we address the issues of the art community? Right. 
and see what we could bring to town or what we can do. And they've been looking at that uh -huh. issue to try and sort of figure out, you know, how the financing would work. Oh, sure. You know, because that's an integral part of these different <laughs> concepts is that we can't uh -huh. simply go ahead with right, something right. without knowing where the funding is coming from or what the funding would be. Right. And then you have a Lake Quality Commission? Right. So the Lake Quality Commission, um, probably fairly self-explanatory. We have a series of lakes in the city. Okay. Um, each How many lakes do you have? Six. Wow. I hope. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, each of the lakes has a representative on it. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, what we're really looking for from them is how do we keep the lakes environmentally sound? Uh, right. You know, how do we deal with invasive species? Uh -huh. um, you know, over the years we've had milfoil issues, we've had mm -hmm. curly leaf pond issues. Uh, so we've tried a different set of treatments, sure. uh, you know, over the years to try and figure out how to address mm -hmm. those. Um, and, you know, that's a continuing problem is, oh, right. you know, you know, the next one is zebra mussels and some mm. of these other things. How do we address those issues so that our lakes stay the best they can? You know, so that when we develop, you know, I think one of the things that's been helpful too is we've been redeveloping the roads in some of the neighborhoods uh -huh. that are the older neighborhoods that oftentimes uh -huh. are around the lakes. We've modified our drainage systems mm -hmm. so less water is oh. flowing into the lakes directly with right. pollutants in it. So. Right. You know, th those, t those type of problems, those type of issues, they help us address. And let's see, you have a planning commission? Planning commission, uh, it's self-explanatory again. All the right. plans, all the developments come before mm -hmm. the planning commission first, before they come to the city council. <clears throat> they look at the plans and the proposals and see what they like, see what they don't like. Sometimes they say, no, go back to the right. drawing board and try again. Right. And so, you know, that's really what that commission does is it looks at the various organizations mm -hmm. that we have or the various plans and you know are these plans meeting our requirements oh right right because you just recently are or maybe you haven't finished up the, the we have finished up our comp plan update yeah. okay so it's out to the neighboring communities uh you know it's a something that the comp plan is something that is across the whole city right. and it sets forth sort of what's allowed to be developed right. in various parts of the city and we're required to update that periodically mm -hmm. and we're uh, required by law to update it this year right. so right. that's what we're just completing. And they probably had some part of that process, They, right? <laughs> they had a very big part of that process. Yeah. And then you have a park and recreational board? We do. Uh, our park and rec board is a little bit different than okay. most. Uh, <clears throat> we have a very unique setup. Uh, there's only three communities in the state of Minnesota that have a oh. independent park board and we're uh -huh. one of them. It's us, Minneapolis, and Rochester. Uh -huh. uh, so our park board actually acts independently from the city council and uh -huh. make decisions on our various parks and trails and those type of operations. And so they operate independently. Uh -huh. um, the city council appoints the members, right, but right. they do make their own decisions mm -hmm. and, you know, we go with that. And why did Maple Grove go with that model? I have no oh. idea. Oh. <laughs> I have it to was say, there when you it came. Was <laughs> there, yeah, it was there when the city started. Uh -huh. I think that probably someone liked the Rochester model. Okay. And that's really what it's based on. Sure. And it seemed to have worked and they liked doing it that way. So that's what we've of done. Of course. Yeah. And last of all, a transit commission. So the transit commission, I think, is really focused on oh. simply our bus mm -hmm. and our, you know, our local ridership right. program. Um, mainly, uh, in order to be on the transit committee, you have to be a bus rider. Okay. Uh, ah. You know, that makes, that makes sense, sense because <laughs> <coughs> we want our people who are experiencing it on a daily right. basis to be on the committee. You can say, this is not working w right or this is working mm -hmm. well so that we can provide the best service we can. We're an opt-out program. Uh -huh. So we have our own bus system. Right, great. Right. So, um, you know, it's it's important for us to have the transit com commission to hear from those people who are oh, right. riding the bus on right. a daily basis. And, you know, they've provided great input over the years to mm -hmm. us. Um, you know, with their help, we've 
seen the light of providing uh -huh. the what I'll call the travel coaches uh -huh. instead of the old time bus designs. Right, I mean, right. everybody has the travel coaches with the Wi-Fi, and uh -huh. you know, it all it works right. very well. Oh, right. Especially people going to work don't have to worry about it, and they can do their computer work. Just do the computer going. work, or read the newspaper, or whatever it is they want to do. Listen to music, and you know right. it works very well. Now, where can somebody <coughs> find out more specific information about these groups? How can they research these if they're ready to do some volunteering? Yeah, I think that the best place is probably on our website. Okay. We have a very good website, and it has. You know, pages for each of those type of mm -hmm. committees. So if you have an interest, you should go and check it out. It also explains how you can apply uh, for permission, per, <coughs> a position on any of those commissions. And people can, of course, go visit their meetings if they want to. Absolutely. So yeah. it's a really good thing for people to do to get involved when you have the time. And everybody's schedule varies as different points in your lifetime, but cities need these volunteers. We, we absolutely need volunteers. It's important mm -hmm. to have active volunteers in your community mm -hmm. because without them, these things can't be accomplished. Right, right. And so there's an application uh, process on the website that they can follow? There is. There is, and it's easy to find, easy to fill out. We don't ask for a lot of information. Mm -hmm. We just want to know why you're interested in a committee and sort of your ranking of committees you'd like to be on. And then, you know, right. this is the time of year to do it too. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was going <coughs> to point out to people that if you've got an interest, go ahead and put the application in. Right, because... Because you'll be doing it in January, right? Right, and even if it isn't the right time period, uh -huh. um, we hang on to the applications for a period of time. So, oh, sure. you know, fill it out, provide it to us. Right. And, when there's openings, we'll look. Yeah, because you, you do it automatically every January, but openings might occur at another point in the year when somebody moves. That's right, yeah. and that happens a lot. Now, onward to some up-and-coming events. You have some outdoor ice skating that's going to start, and where is it available? Uh, well, the main outdoor ice skating that we have now is at Central Park. Okay. Um, it is a... Uh, sort of an oval that works mm -hmm. uh, right there. It's an outdoor sheet where uh, <coughs> we have an indoor facility that you can change your skates, get some ah. food, get concessions. Oh, that's kind of They nice. have an outdoor fire pit right there oh, to cool. stay warm. And then it's a nice skating uh -huh. oval uh, or figure eight or whatever they want to call it, sort of a s snaky uh, thing. And it's uh -huh. in, we have a Zamboni right there to resurface ah, the ice, ah. so the Zamboni comes out periodically, so it's very well done. Oh, right. It's a very popular place with the teenagers mm -hmm. to go. Apparently, it's a very popular place for ah. date night. Oh, so, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. So, and then obviously, we, we still have our outdoor rinks as uh -huh. well for hockey. Right. But, you know, the new fun thing is the Central Park ah. ice. How long has that been there? I think this is our third winter. Yeah, I was going to say, not too long. No. No, I know that the first year we rented 65,000 pairs Ooh. of skates. Yeah, it was very popular. Very popular. Very. So I think it's still very popular. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great activity for the city to have. Oh, definitely. And it is important for cities to have things that your teenage, little older... It's, Children it's, yeah. would want to take part in. Yeah, I think so because, you know, I, I think that it's an age where it's, they like to be active, they right. want to do something, and it's, it gives them something different to do. Right. And then you've got a family New Year's Eve party that's at the Maple Grove Community Center. Maybe you can tell us about when and what and how to get involved in it. So I think that the best way to do that is obviously it's New Year's Eve. Okay, yeah, so, it is on New Year's Eve. So, <laughs> so I think that it's it's sort of a series of activities. And, okay. you know, one of the things is probably the best way to make sure you can be involved is I think that they take the reservations online. Okay. Or they sell tickets online or whatever sure. it is that they do. So On the website. Yeah, on the website. So you make sure that you have your tickets so that because okay. oftentimes it's completely booked and oh, completely sure. full. Um, they have you have the ability to go ice skating uh -huh. and then use the gym facilities and engage in some of those other activities there. So they make sure it's a complete night of activities for everybody. And so there's a whole range of things that people get get involved. That's with. right. And do it with their children. And do it and with their children. And let's see. I've got the time is from two to six p.m. Right. Last fall's elections. Maybe you can tell us who, who or what got. In, 
elected. Sure, sure. Uh, so there was three of us on the council okay. that were up for election, myself as mayor, and then there were two council members, okay. uh, uh, Karen Jagger and Phil Leith, both right. ran for re-election and were, and were re-elected. Ah. So we had the same council going forward as we had last year. Oh. So there aren't any changes oh. <clears throat> on that. It was obviously what the people wanted, and right, right. hopefully it's a good sign of the people are satisfied right, with what's going right. on in the community. Well, that's kind of a signal, I think. Yeah, I do too. Right. Approaching snow, and we have some on the ground right now. Yes, we so do. it's probably a good idea to remind people of what's involved with snow plowing and parking and when you should and yeah. shouldn't. And so really, you know, in our city in the wintertime, we don't allow parking on the streets from essentially midnight to 6, okay. 6 p.m. Okay. So I think it's actually 2, 2 a.m. But, you know, I think that it's very important that people realize that um, we don't allow parking on the streets okay. in the wintertime. Overnight. Overnight. And only in the winter? Oh, yeah, or actually, it's year, it's okay, year right, round. Right, it's right. year round, but I think the primary focus is, is, is the need, winter. The need is yeah. now. Because in particular, if we have a snowstorm, uh, we need to clean up. Right. The easiest time to clean up is in those early morning hours right. because the traffic is really small and that means that our vehicles can go through the neighborhood at a good rate of pace sure. get the roads really cleaned off right. cleaned off right you know if you leave your vehicle on the street um, they have to slow down right. they have to go around you they leave the big, big mound, long, bunch leave of snow, mound of right. snow in the middle of the road oftentimes your car gets sort of plowed in um, so you know, if you leave your car on the street overnight, <coughs> you know, there's a good chance it'll get ticketed. Right. And if there's a snowstorm involved, there's a good chance you'll get towed. Right. So, so people should be quite aware of that, right? Right. And how much snow be, stimulates the plows? Uh, three inches. Okay. So, you know, it isn't an inch of snow, but, you know, as we get to three inches, they get out. Uh -huh. And the other thing to remember is that you know, when it's snowing really, really hard, right? especially during the day or the e early evening hours, um, you're not going to see the snow plows out because uh -huh. <clears throat> we'll have a couple out doing some of the main routes. Sure. But you know, our so snow plow operators are only allowed to plow so many hours in a day. Oh, certainly. And so uh, that what that really means is that we try to save those hours for those early morning hours where they can plow the most amount of roads. And then that helps people get off to work easier. Right, well, right. You know, our plan, if everything works and nothing uh -huh. breaks, right. you know, because sometimes the plows break down, but right. our plan really is to have all the cities hopefully plow by 6.30 in the morning, uh -huh. you know, so that, you know, for those people who are going to work, right. Right. they have freshly plowed streets and the roads work. But when we have a blizzard, okay, ah, uh, you know the blizzard which is goes. A different thing than we, just snow. Well, huh. yeah, you right. know it goes all evening and all right. night. Right. Don't expect your street to necessarily be plowed when you get up in the morning. Ah, right. It right. depends on the severity. It depends on the severity right. of the snow. Right. I mean, us who have grown up here, right, I think fully understand and appreciate uh, when the snow is going to be plowed and when it's not. And I know right. that sometimes I've had calls from people wondering why their street isn't plowed and you know I look out the window and my street isn't plowed and nobody's street yeah. is plowed and it's it's snowed a foot of snow and it's still snowing hard and, right, and so it, you know the, the the street isn't gonna be plowed for a while no no because the snow has to be tapering off or ending right to and, make it effective right and so I think sometimes particularly people who are from other places oh, right, right. just don't understand right how the system really has to work in order for the roads to be plowed. So that's okay. Now you ticketed ca ticket cars, are cars towed? Once in, in a while, Maple once in a while they're towed. It depends okay. on, you know, the situation and what's going on, especially with the snow. You know, if we have a big snowstorm, we probably will tow you because we want to get the roads Get cleared. everything yeah. clear. Yeah, but you know, I, otherwise generally, we will give tickets, but uh -huh. not have too much towing going. Right, on. and is um, is plowing 
identified on your website or any place for people that that this is a, I'm not sure. a snow event? I, you know, like I'm not some sure. Some cities, I don't we, we know. Don't, we don't declare snow okay. emergencies. Okay. So I think that the answer is is that uh, we've pretty much gone with is that when it snows, Look out the window, we'll be coming inches, out. We'll right, be coming out right, to plow, and right. you know, my you know, my impression is is that you know, we we get out and snow plow as soon as it makes sense to do so. Oh, right. right. And you know, uh, people really in the winter time shouldn't be parking on the streets. No, I, I, in fact, that's probably good advice. Period. If when it's winter. Right. Right. And I think. You know, in the summertime, it's sometimes true as well. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that people have to remember, especially, you know, if they're parking or leaving their cars, whether it's on the street or in their driveway, uh, make sure your car is locked. Oh, definitely. Because, you know, I think the greatest sort of crime that we have of thefts mm -hmm. happens in two ways. One, people's cars that are unlocked. Right. And garage doors that are open. Ah. You know, people go into the garage and take stuff oh, because right, people leave right. their garage doors open. It's amazing how many people go into their house at night right. and forget to close the garage ah. door. So, you know, just try and remind people. And if you see a oh, garage right, door that's right. open, your neighbor's garage door that's open late at night, and you you have their cell phone, just text oh, them and say, "Hey, your definitely. garage door is still open." Oh yeah, that would be a good advice for because people in a neighborhood. You know, you're helping your neighbor out because Definitely. usually, you know, they they've getting ready for bed and someone forgot to close it, the garage door. Yeah, that can happen, and definitely unhappily when you find something broken or right or something taken or yeah. taken out of your garage, right? Right. right. So, just something for people mm -hmm. to remember. And then, any time they shouldn't park, like from. 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. or something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know. J don't leave your car on the street overnight. Don't leave the car on the street overnight. Right. There really shouldn't be a need to leave a right. car on the street overnight. There should be an ability to park it in your driveway. Right, right. Uh, it's, there's just a whole s series of bad things that can happen to your car if oh, it's left right. on the street right. overnight. Right, right. So that everybody get updated and get their heads together yeah. about if it's snowing heavy, get your car off the street yeah. and watch for the street to get cleared. Yeah, yeah. you know, they do a great job. The oh, snowplow right, operators, right. they do a great job. They get that done right. They get it done clean. Uh, but they need your help as well to make right. sure that cars right. aren't on the street. Um, do you have anything that people are contacting you about now? That, uh, you know, um, I, I, there isn't a lot okay. these days. Um, you know, I know that periodically we get a lot right. of calls. Uh, oftentimes it has to do with a certain development project. Ah, I know that okay. I had one a couple months ago where uh -huh. I had, and then I had one a few months before that where I had probably 100, 200 calls Ooh. about a specific project. Right. Um, so I think that's oftentimes where uh -huh. our calls are focused. Some new projects coming to town, some new developments coming to town, and people are concerned about some aspect of oh, it. Oh, sure. And so, you know, that's, that's our job. That's what we respond right. to. That's what we deal with. Well, and people that are looking to move into a city can look at the comprehensive plan that you just did and kind of see what's projected for the area that they're it, looking it's, at. Yes, it's a very good tool to yeah. look at and say, okay, I know what's going in the neighborhood by. Right, right, instead of getting all upset later on when something goes across the street that was already planned to go there. Right, and we have that periodically. And yeah. You know, oftentimes that is the answer. It's like, well, it's been planned to be this for 20 years. Right. <laughs> it's been so planned a long it's time. It's been planned a long time this way. And right. so when you're here saying, I didn't know, yeah. no one ever told me, or someone told me it wasn't, it's like, no, our city plan says that's what it's going to be. And so, you know, I think that's one thing that people need to re remember is right. that sometimes the person that's selling them the property. Might not have tell them everything. Might not tell them everything accurately. <laughs> right, and right, so it's right. it's good for you to check it out yourself as well. And your city plan is available on your website. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So people can go in, they can look at the area of the city that they're looking maybe to buy and be really up 
on what's they, happening. They should really be able to tell. Projected to happen pretty, in the future. Pretty much know exactly what will happen. Right. Yeah. You're good. The city is going to be starting to study your community center. When was that built, the community center? The community center, I think, opened in January of two of 1997. Okay, so. And so it's. Oh, Getting 20 years right, old, right. and I think that given the fact it is 20 years old, we want to take some time, step back, and take a study of right. what are the uses that are really working well, uh -huh. what uses do we need to expand, and how do we deal with some of those issues. I mean, sure. there's oftentimes days where the parking lot's full. Oh, right. So, you know, what do we do about the parking issue? Mm -hmm. um, we have Lifetime who shares the building oh, with right, us. Right. And you know, what do we do about that shared experience with the pool and how do we handle all these various issues and do we expand this community center? Uh -huh. Do we add on to it? Sort of what all do we do? And right. it's you know, we need to take some time to think about it and study it and make sure we get it right. And so uh, is lifetime part of the planning, right? Lifetime's part of the planning. So they're think. part of the group that the city is pulling together to make this study? Yes, okay. yes, because they're an owner of part of the building. Okay. They share part of the building mm -hmm. with us, and so, you know, we need to make sure that we understand what their future, oh, sure. what they plan for the future of their part of the building is, so that <clears throat> as we plan ahead, we can plan for whatever it is that they're thinking about as well. What are there some new things on the horizon that are impelling the need well, to make change, or just yeah. because of the age of the building? Well, I think it's a little combination of a okay. number of things. Um, you know, I know that Lifetime would probably like to update its facility. Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of its new facilities mm -hmm. around the country have significant differences ah, to what our facility okay. has. <clears throat> and it has to do with their new concepts. So my my belief is they want to look at how do we update our facility oh, here. Sure. And so do we do that by adding it on? Do we do that by adding a different part of the building? Um, if that happens, what do we as a city do with that right. part of the building? Right. So there's a lot of thought that has to go into sort of what's next for the community center. And who will be involved in this group that's going to be studying what changes need to be made? I think it's mainly going to be uh, city staff and okay. lifetime staff, at least to start with. Um, I don't think that we're really adding too much of community right. input at this point. We're just trying to work to figure out what the potential needs oh, are. Oh, right, right. And then at some later time in some the Some later future, time we'll, right. we'll add the next element once we have a better... I think it really has to do with what's really <coughs> lifetime's long-term plan. Oh, right, right. Because until we understand that better, there really isn't much need to get further oh, right. community development because we don't know where it's going. Mm -hmm. So it's gathering information phase. Yes. So it's, this is kind of a long-term project. This will be a long-term project, mm -hmm. yes. Well, I want to thank you very much. I thank you. I appreciate your sharing your expertise with our audience out there. And we'll encourage those of you from... Maple Grove, if you've got, if any of the areas we talked about are ones that kind of ring a bell with you, be sure to be in contact with Mayor Stephenson or with the, your city employees too, right? That's absolutely right. Bye.